We are incredibly psyched about Looped on the iPhone. Looped is about connecting with people on the go, which is, after all, the main reason you have a phone. We show you where people are, what they're doing, and what cool places are around you. The orange pin up there is where I am right now, and the blue pins represent my friends. We make serendipity happen. It's amazing how often you're at a restaurant a couple of blocks away from a friend or stuck in an airport with an old classmate and don't know about it. We'll show you that. This is the best version of Loop that we have ever made, uh, and by far the best device we've ever had the opportunity to work with. We've developed for nearly every mobile platform out there. This one is the best and the most powerful. So James is navigating the map just like you'd expect, by pinching and dragging and tapping. And we can see that there are some friends down south. A friend of mine is driving across the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, and here are some friends that are very nearby us right now. We can tap the map a few times to zoom in. Uh, and as we zoom in, we see that there's one friend very, very close. So we can tap on that uh, dot, and it's Erin Easter. And she's only a few blocks away. And so we can see what she's been doing today. This is called her journal. Photos she's taken, text she's entered, all of this tied to places and shareable with any other service she'd like. And the thing in blue is a comment that her friend has left earlier today. So we can tap on that top entry that says back at the cutest little cafe. Uh, and we can tap on it again, and that photo will enlarge. So that does actually look pretty cool, and I don't have lunch plans today, so we'll see if she's free. So we can go back, I could call her, or I could text her, we integrate with the native iPhone APIs, but I'll leave a comment, uh, and I'll say free for lunch. If she is free, then I can get directions to her in one click, and one line of code, another example of the power of the SDK. And this is really all an example of the power of location. Location plus a contact list and information about cool places means you never have to eat lunch alone again or at a bad place. And we think that's really cool. We really do. Um, you can use Loop with your friends on most other carriers or devices in the US. We are the largest social mapping service in the world. And very happy to announce that Loop will be free on the iPhone and in the App Store at launch. Anyway, we think this is a new era of mobile. We're thrilled to be part of it. Thanks very much. Next is TypePad. TypePad is a great mobile blogging application that's native for the iPhone. And to talk you through their experiences with the SDK, I'd like to invite up Michael Sippy. Michael? Thanks, Scott. With me today is, uh, is Ray Marshall. Ray is our engineering manager for all of our mobile applications development. TypePad is the largest professional blogging service in the world. Every month, more than 100 million people visit a blog that's powered by TypePad, and photo blogging is one of our most popular features. Let me show you TypePad on the iPhone. So this is the application's home screen, and from here it's incredibly easy for me to post to my blog. I can create a simple text post by tapping Create a Post, and that brings up our post editor. Or I could choose to blog the moment by taking a photo and sending it directly to my blog. This takes advantage of the camera API in the iPhone SDK. But what I want to do today is actually blog a photo that I took yesterday. A group of folks were visiting San Francisco from our Paris office, and I took them down to Fisherman's Wharf. So I'll tap on Add a Photo. This will let me browse my photo albums, and I'll go to the Trip to San Francisco album, and I'll pick that, post, that first photo there. I can move and scale it to make it fit just right for my blog, and I'll tap Choose to select it. This brings me to my post editor. And I'll tap to change the blog that I want to post it to. My default is Michael's blog, but I want to put this in Traveling California, which is where I blog about all of my adventures in the Golden State. I'll tap to add a title, and uh, we'll just call this Wow. I can tap to choose categories to put it in the right place in my blog's archives. We'll pick Bay Area and Food and Drink. And now finally, I'll tap to add some uh, body text and some commentary for the post, and we'll just say Yum. So I tap Publish, and TypePad for iPhone instantly starts sending the post and the photo up to my blog and returns me to the application's home screen. I'll tap on the Pending Items view to watch our progress. And in the meantime, I'd actually go and create a new post if I wanted to. But there, we just got an alert to let us know that the post has been published. We'll tap on the View button. That'll launch Safari and take us right to the post that we've just created, and it's available for the world to see. And that's how easy it is to blog with TypePad on the iPhone. We're really excited about the iPhone SDK. Made it incredibly easy for us to develop this mobile application. And we're also excited to announce that the app will be available for free at the launch of the iPhone App Store, which we believe will be the best way for users to get applications on their mobile device. Thanks very much for having us. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Scott.
Next is the Associated Press. The Associated Press is a cooperative of over 5,000 news organizations. And they provide the news to more than half the world's population every day. Now, they already have one of the best web applications for the iPhone. But they're taking it to the next level by building a native application. This allows them to take advantage of some features that are unique to the native SDK. To tell you about their experiences with the SDK, I'd like to invite up Benjamin Moss. Benjamin? Thanks, Scott. For us, the iPhone has been an important catalyst in creating a new network that will combine sources from thousands of news organizations. We've been reusing the SDK for a while now, and I'm excited to show you what we built. We call it the Mobile News Network. Local news from trusted sources is really important. Here, you can add all the locations you want, but the great thing about the iPhone is it always knows where you are. And so I've used the location APIs to automatically retrieve local news from seven sources here in the Bay Area. All the content is stored and cached and seamlessly updated in the background, so you can stay up to date even if you're out of network, like on a plane or in a subway. In addition to local news, you can also read top sports, business, technology, and entertainment news. We love how we can showcase our award-winning photography on the iPhone's high-res screen. I mean, look at that. Isn't that amazing? You can also watch great video from our news network. I'm very um, up. Not only can you be the first to share stories with your friends by text and email, but we encourage you to get involved in reporting the news you see. So if you have a photograph or a first-hand account of a breaking news story, you can send it to us immediately from your iPhone. We've loved working for the iPhone. The SDK, since it's based on OS X, feels like a desktop development environment, which has helped us transition and get up to speed really quickly. Hands down, it's the most feature-rich mobile platform going. But what's really impressed me is how fast my team's been able to build this, all in a few weeks. So thank you, Apple, for the opportunity to be here. Look for the Mobile News Network on the App Store when it launches. It'll be a free download. And stay tuned. We're already working on more exciting ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Pangea Software. Pangea is a longtime Mac game developer. And they managed to port on the beta SDK not just one, but two games, which are absolutely fantastic. To walk you through it, I'd like to invite up Brian Greenstone. Brian? Now, the game is completely touch-based. So we use the touch to drag our puzzle piece down over here. We use the touch for zooming in and out. We use the touch for panning around. And most importantly of all, we use the touch for rotating. So in this case, we do a little rotation, get the uh, water droplets in there. 